Well, the HBO series The Gilded Age is in its second season and tells the story of New York City's high society during the late 1800s. Here's a look at the new season. New York is where society puts itself on display. The leaders meet each other and their children court each other. The old guard think they can keep out the new people with impunity, but nothing stays the same forever. But I don't just want a husband on data. He is rich. He's even handsome. What more could a girl ask for? It's a great show. It's in the middle of its second season. Joining us now, members of the cast of The Gilded Age, Morgan Spector, Christine Baranski, Cynthia Nixon, Danae Benton, Carrie Coon, and Louisa Jacobson. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. I, I, I want to get to the show in a second. You seem to actually like one another <laughs> quite a bit. Is that a fair assessment? What's not to like? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. We really love each other. Just yeah. a bunch of theater kids. I think that's yeah. how we get along. Yeah. Yeah. Theater it's camp. Like theater theater camp. camp. It, it does. does. It does how do you think the, the, mm. the theater kid, the Broadway experience, your guys' resumes are uh, pretty remarkable, uh, plays into this show specifically, this cast specifically? I mean, anybody who's worked on the stage for a while, eventually you do a corset play, and you, right. you know, night after night, eight shows a week, and a corset, you know, okay, this is my world, this is how I speak, this is how I carry myself, and it's, I, th I think a lot of us have just real theater training and chops, so, yeah. Um, and a sense of ensemble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. working yeah. about telling the story and not about, you know, standing out in a room. Throwing uh, the ball back and that's forth. That's right. You mentioned the costumes. Mm -hmm. uh, the aesthetics of fashion is not my specialty, but you can't possibly ignore the extraordinary costumes, mm -hmm. how they all come together. The set is also mm -hmm. unbelievable. But Morgan, the characters as well, some of them are directly adap adaptations from real people. Some of them are uh, akin to people or have through lens through. How do you prep for that, knowing that there's a historic parallel to who you're playing? Um, the, 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 the real sort of analog that I was given initially was Jay Gould. So I, um, I read a bunch about him and he's a, he's a really fascinating character. I mean, a lot of these people, the sort of American myth that you can, you know, you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps or you could sort of turn your, you know, the rags to riches stories. And these guys really were that, you know, these, these were, these were tough, these were hard <laughs> men, um, man. but such True, a devoted right? family man. Yeah. yeah. And he, you know, liked to tend his orchids, but yes. And he was, so he had that, that duality. <laughs> Of, of, of being sort of truly ruthless in business, mm -hmm. um, but loving and tender in, in his domestic life. I think what's, what's fascinating to me is you guys are able to thread together the dynamics of race and class and gender, even like labor disputes, things that are obviously still very much issues uh, today. It's subtle, it's nuanced, and it, it doesn't feel like a blunt in your face, this is the issue. You realize that it's all together mm -hmm. threaded in that time period. I think Julian Fellows really knows his audience. I think he knows that they want to be entertained. They're coming for the costumes. They're coming for the real housewives, you know, style disputes. And he's also then able to enter the, the time period obliquely and sort of bring in these other factors that were sort of bubbling under the surface. You know, we're not, we're not dealing with the complexity of the, you know, economic disparity necessarily, but he is sort of tiptoeing into all those worlds. So people are, the, the awareness is always there. Right, I would say to follow up on that, He's really wonderful at using human stories that are quite personal to reveal and deal with uh, bigger themes. And, um, and Sonia Warfield and Erica Dunbar were yeah. really instrumental in being able to create that nuance in the worlds that Peggy moves through. Mm -hmm. We were really able to collaborate with Julian in um, just adding those textures so that they don't feel quite um, like icing on the world, but still actually get to be rooted in their own um, rich internal lives. And so it was special to get to kind of alchemize what that could be. There's a real, there's a real wit, uh, I think, to cutting from uh, Peggy being in mortal danger mm -hmm. to, you know, this, is the soup going to be delivered without spilling? Uh, and I think it, there's, a, there's a temptation to see this as like two separate storylines, but actually I think when you go from one into the other, you see, oh, this is, this is what privilege is. This is what wealth is. It creates right. a world where the stakes are just right. absurd as opposed to right. life and death. It's a, such a fascinating period, but it's also so like our own. It's, mm -hmm. There's a new class of people. Mm -hmm. Then it was industrial revolution money. Now it's tech money mm -hmm. um, just bubbling up from, you know, from... No, seemingly from nowhere and challenging the status quo and, and so much disposable income that in a sort of a grotesque way. African-Americans you know, striving for e equality and 
immigrants uh, facing uh, prejudice and maybe competition that, as they saw it with African Americans and uh, you know women trying to push the envelope and trying to have the right to vote, much less, you know, or, or even have careers. It certainly is a, a, about the fear that certain people, certainly my character, mm -hmm. feels about a world that is in, you know, in danger, in danger of being lost forever. Yes. And her sense of values and her place in the world and her concern for her niece and her sense of uh, anger that, that a whole societal structure is, is crumbling. She looks across um, the street and sees a Trump Tower, you know. She mm -hmm. <laughs> thinks, what is this? Who, who are these people? They're not our people. They care more about money and showing off money. So uh, it's, a, it's about a world in transition, and I think we're living in a world of, in transition now. Some of you have been on massive hit HBO shows before. Some of you have amazing resumes, but this is the first major HBO hit. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that informs the approach, if the experience for those that have the uh, ability to talk to those who have who haven't, if that <laughs> plays any role at all? For me, it's been so special. I think when I originally got cast in this, I didn't know how much um, how much the, like black audiences would feel seen or or care about this show. And um, walking around Brooklyn, like I mostly get stopped by black women, and it's so special because uh -huh. they're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like it's us. Like they really, oh. it's really us, and it feels um, it's just more special than I expected mm -hmm. it to be. That um, that it just feels so claimed. I also get stopped by black women. They all recognize Bertha, too. I love, we, no one, we do stand yeah. Bertha. We really yes. stand about yes. you know? And it's, I love that. It's, it's what gets done, needs yeah. to get done. The show really is extraordinary. Costumes, the set, the acting, the writing. I really appreciate you guys coming in. Thank oh, you thank so much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.